Good morning. Good morning. This is Minister Nehemiah Newman. Come from Shady Dale Church of God, 4626 Tronwood Street, Houston, Texas, 77016, where Darius Miller is the pastor, and I'm the Sunday School Superintendent. And I will be bringing the lesson this morning. And when we bring the, go to the lesson, let's go to God. Most gracious, kind, and heavenly Father. Come this morning, oh Lord, with a heart of thanks and praise. Let's thank you, dear Lord, for another day, dear Lord. Thanking you for the snowstorm, Lord. Thanking you for bringing us through it. Oh, Lord, you said, if we just hold on and wait on you, that you would bring us through. Oh, Lord, and you brought us through this snowstorm, Lord. And we're just grateful and thankful, dear Lord, for the snowstorm. Thank you this morning. Thank you for what you've done for me this morning, oh, Lord. And, and I'm just grateful and thankful this morning. And asking you, dear Lord, thanking you that I didn't hear any disturbing phone calls, oh, Lord, over the course of the, the night until this, this morning, Lord. And, all my family members as well. You know, I actually continue to just bless them this morning, Lord. And bless my church family as well this morning. Bless the pastor and first lady this morning, Lord, help me, Lord. And that everything will be well with them. Now, Lord, I ask you to just bless me and the teacher this morning. Bless me, dear Lord, that I may be able to bring the lesson to that you have laid out before me to your people, dear Lord, that I will bring it as lateral as I can. Thank you again this morning. I ask you to bless the lesson this morning. Bless the Sunday school. That when it's all said and done, there, Lord, that all the saints and the listeners that stand and one standing in the background will be able to get some wisdom and knowledge and understanding out of it. So, Lord, just be with me to go through this lesson. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I say good morning again. This is week 13 of our Sunday school lesson, February the 28th, 2021. And I always say it at the start of my lesson that we need to redeem our time because the time these days are evil. And we need to make the best of our time now. And I always say the only way that we can do this is through love. Through loving one another. Helping one another. If you see somebody in need, help them. That ain't close your enemy. Strip say if, you, if the enemy is thirsty, give them drink. If they're hungry, give them something to eat. And so this is what we need to be about, how we follow the business. And as I said, this week 13, February 28, 2021, our topic today will be Lila, called to service. Lila, called to service. So what is our study is about today? Say many people have been presented to a generous hospitality or have been in a position to extend hospitality to someone. Lila was an extended woman who responded to, to the gospel message with faithfulness, generosity, and hospitality. And all this is going to be coming from Acts chapter 16, verse 11 through 15, and we're going to read verse 40 in that as well. And 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 26, verses 26 to 30. And what topic will be discussed this morning? Hospitality, generosity, faith, and God's way. Okay. And you know, like my dad always extended the hospitality. You know, he always had a lot of pigs and stuff. Whenever he killed a pig, a hog, he, could, he always killed two. And he spread it out across the community, all across the community, giving some, some of it away. He didn't need, we didn't need it all. We need to share this. My dad felt he needed to share this, show hospitality and generosity to the others and to the neighbor. And so that's what my dad done. My dad always showed generosity and hospitality. Okay. Let's look at about background. And say the Antioch Church decision to send Paul and his team to missionaries spread the gospel to Europe. In cities with no synagogue, people often met outside of town on the Sabbath day for prayer. At Philippi, the missionary found Lila, who was possibly a Greek Macedonian living in Rome, settlement, living in, in this Rome settlement. Lila was a worshiper of God, 
but did not yet have the truth about Jesus. She had the members of her household responded to Paul's message and was baptized. Then she extended hospitality by inviting Paul and his companions to stay in her home. Her home. They accepted the invitation, proving their understanding that all are truly one through faith in Christ. Okay, that was our bio background. And we see this later light, and we've been talking about women in the last few lessons about how women are playing a vital role with God and how they are helping to lead them. Like last Sunday before last, Mary Magdalene played a big role in the gospel. And here we see in this lesson, Lila is called a servant. So let's look at our lesson and see what happens. Okay. Let's look at Acts 16, chapter 16, level 213 in Philippi. Acts 16, level, for Taurus was put on the sea and sailed straight to Symmetry. And the next day, Paul said we went to Nelpos. From there, we traveled to Philippi, a Roman colony and the leading city of that district of Macedonia. And Paul said, we stayed there several days. On the seventh day, we went outside the city gates to the river, where we expected to find a place of worship. We sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. Okay, now let's see what, how, what went on with these women and how Paul and Lila and all of them connected together. Look at verse 11. As Paul, Silas, and Timothy traveled on their missionary journey, they came from Turns to Samaritan, an island along the route to Philippi. They spent the night in cemetery before going on to Nepalus which was the seaport of the important city of Philippi, about 10 miles out. Verse 12 and 13 say, Philippi was a Roman colony, centered on, on the main road between Rome and Asia. It was Paul's usual custom to go to the synagogue on Sunday, on the Sabbath day. But Philippi had no synagogue, the Bible says. That probably indicated that there were a few Jews in the city because 10 Jews, 10 Jewish men would, would be, be enough to uh, form a synagogue. In such a situation, the unusual practice was to have a place of prayer, an official meeting place, often along the river. That was Paul and, and the others. That's, that's where Paul and others found a group of women. Rest of the city, a large acre gate has been evacuated. The road led to it across a small river about a mile outside the city. Perhaps that was the place of prayer referred to here. And we see they say when Paul then went to Philippi, it wasn't a synagogue there because they say if it had been at least 10 Jewish men there, they could establish one. But there was, wasn't that many men, so they all went outside the gate to along the seashore and uh, they had prayer when they together with these ladies, these women. Okay? Let's look at Acts 16, chapter 16, 14, 15. And we're going to look at verse 40. Lila responds. Look at verse 14. Say, one of these listeners was a woman from the city of Thyra. Name Lila, a dealer in purple, in purple cloth. She was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. Verse 15 says, when she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us, Paul said, they invited us to her house. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, Come and stay at my house. And she persuaded, and Paul said, he persuaded us to come and stay. Verse 40 says, after Paul and Silas came out of the out of the prison, 
they went to Lila's house where they, where they met with the brothers and sisters and encouraged them. Then they left. Okay, so we see where Lila is extending the hospitality for Paul and him went and met with Lila. And she said, she, if you count, if you consider me as a wisdom of God, come on in, you can stay at, stay at my house. And Paul and stayed at her house. And, and Silas and Paul, and Paul and Silas came out of prison. When they came out of prison, they went to Lila's house, where they met with the brothers and the sisters and encouraged them. Okay, now let's look at, see what this uh, commentary and see what, what was just being said. Look at verse 14. It says, Lila was a prominent businesswoman from Thyrus, a city in the province of Asia. They, that, that, that area was known for the manufacture of purple dye, and Lila was a dealer in purple clothing. She was probably wealthy because the dye was very costly. She was also identified as a worshiper of God, a Gentile who worshiped the one true God and identified with the Jewish teaching, although not a converted to Judaism, since there was a since there was a Jewish colony in Thyra, her faith might have been, have had its beginning there. The Bible says in Philippi she had found a a way to continue her devotion. Paul found a, a ready response from her as God opened her heart through the gospel message. And she began the first convert in in Europe. Verse 15 says, Lila has the members of her household was baptized. This would probably have indicated, included relatives as well as servants who followed her lead in receiving Jesus as Savior. She replied, she really, she realized the identity herself as a believer in the law and gave evidence of it by opening her house to Paul and his companions. We thought that Paul and Silas landed in prison for casting a spirit out of a slave who ended who ended the slave ownership practice and using her to make money for for them by predicting the future. When the earthquake from the from God shook the prison doors open, the jails and his household became fathers of Christ. When Paul and Silas left the prison, Lila once again extended hospitality to them, and they went to her house. Others who had placed their faith in Jesus joined them and were offered encouragement before they departed. And we see how Lila and all that, how she extended the hospitality, how she was a follower of God, and, and how all of them was baptized, and, and all this, and, and how Paul and them, you know, Lila once said, Lila once again, when Paul and Silas left the prison, Lila once again extended her hospitality to them, and they went to her house. Others, others who had placed their faith in Jesus join them and and to offer encouragement before they before they left. So Paul them was offering encouragement to them, to them before they left to be a follower of Jesus. Okay, let's look at First Corinthians chapter one verse twenty six to thirty. Called and chosen. First Corinthians chapter one verse twenty six. And Paul said, brothers and sisters, think of you Think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many was of no birth. Verse 27 says, But God showed the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. Verse 28 said, God chose the low things of this world and the, and the, spite, and, and the spied things and the things that was not 
too noiseful of things that are, so that no one may boast before him. Verse 30 says, it is because of him that you are in Christ, who has become for us wisdom from God that is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Let's see what that was saying. Let's see what verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 26, 1 through 30, the chosen one, what it was saying. Look at verse 26. These verses summarize the name, the nature of God's call on the lives, on the life of life. And the other mentioned in the in this unit. In the church today, as well as the church of Paul days, those who fall short of human standard uh, are, are often the one who respond to the call of God. And perhaps it was because they was not as personal members of society, uh, people of noble birth, they, that they are more often to give themselves completely to the saving and life-changing work of Christ. And verse 27, 29 say, the kingdom of God is an upside-down kingdom. It's God's kingdom. People and things deemed foolish or weakness, weak by the world are actually shown to be wise and strong. As followers of Christ, we might consider by many to be low and despised, almost non-existent. This ensures beyond the shadow of a doubt that we have nothing to boast about. Any good that happens is through us in the work of God through Christ. God's good plan was to send Jesus to, to die for our sin and bring us eternal life. Following Christ is true wisdom. It leads to righteousness, a right standing before God, holiness, holy living, without sin in a way that honor God, and the redemption of our souls for all time. And we see here that that, that we say these verses summarize the nature of God's call to life. And others mentioned in this unit. And the church today, it says, as well as the church of all days, those who fall short of human standards are often the ones to respond to, to the call of God. And that's true. That's what he came here. He came here to say the, uh, to say the rich and the righteous. He came to, to, to witness to the law of heart. The one that that that's low that's low in spirit. And it said, said this, often these are the ones who respond to God's call. Perhaps it's perhaps it's because they are not influential members of society or people of noble birth. That they are more often to give themselves completely. To the saving and life changing of Jesus Christ. And so he say, and verse 30 say, God's good plan was to send Jesus to die for our sin and bring us eternal life. Isn't that what the scriptures are saying? Following Christ is true wisdom. It leads to righteousness, a right standard before God. Holding this living without sin in a way that honor God and the redemption of our soul for all time. And you see how this is how the women are playing part in God's in God's ministry. How loud. She was a, a witch of God, the scripture said, but she had not yet learned about Jesus Christ. 
And so she, so God opened her heart up to Paul and Silas and Timothy when they came they on their journey. I said, her and her whole family were baptized. And when they was baptized, they showed that hospitality and that generosity to Paul and Silas and Timothy. She said, if you think, if you, if you consider me as a, a worship of God, come on in, you can stay at my house. And she extended that hospitality to him, and, and all was well. They all became one. one, one. And so this is the way we ought to be. We ought to be able to, to, uh, to show this hospitality and generosity to others. Show that love and compassion for one another. Help spread the gospel. Go out and spread the gospel. And I kind of hope you enjoyed this Sunday school lesson on showing how how Lila was called to to, uh, to serve God. And see it say that the low heart is the one that would be the one that would, would, would rely on Jesus. So I hope you understand this lesson and showing how we ought to extend our generosity to one another, open up our hearts to one another, and share our hospitality to others. Like I said, when my dad was back living back in the country, my dad had a lot of chickens and they had a lot of eggs and cooked a lot of hogs. Every time he killed a hog, he always shared it. And a couple of his buddies came down and cut it all up. They took some of it. They took some of it back over there where they, to their neighborhood. And, and Daddy gave all the people around the neighborhood to them. Daddy showed his hospitality. He was showing he was generous. And that's the way we need to be. We need to be showing this to them. Because if we don't get out and show this to, our, to the people outside of the church, show that generosity and that love and that compassion to them, they gonna want to know what kind of Christian we are. So we need to get out and start showing that love and generosity and help spread that gospel. gospel. Spread the gospel. So if you enjoyed this lesson today, I ask you to take this lesson with you and just remember how generous and gracious God was to us. And it showed how much he loved us and he sent his son down upon his earth to die by our sins. Something we couldn't do. We ran up a tab, we couldn't even pay it. God had to give his son to us. So he'll be a down payment for us. So take this lesson with you. Focus on being generous, showing hospitality to your neighbors. And let's have spread God's word. Have spread the gospel. Let us pray. Most gracious kind in heaven. We are so grateful and thankful, dear Lord, for your word, how you have left your word behind, Lord, for us to, to uh, know how to conduct our lives, Lord, and know how to live our lives, how to live our lives, dear Lord, according to you, for your will, for your way, Lord. There's no other way but your way. And we are grateful and thankful, dear Lord, how you have shown us love, hospitality, being generous, Lord, and that you are loving and kind and compassionate and forgiving God that, that you are God of promise and you do not go back on your promise. Thank you again for everything and all that you've done and being with us throughout the day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.